just because the market's open doesn't mean something is happening. Yes, yeah, something might be happening, something might be moving, but that something might not necessarily reflect your strategy. Right? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Um, now that we have the Fed behind us, now that we have the CPI behind us, now we could concentrate on the most important part is family, right? It's the holidays. We are, what, 10 days away from Christmas. Uh, we are, what, 16, 17 days away from New Year's Eve, hopefully everybody had a really good trade uh, trading year or a great developing year or some of your uh, relationship goals were, were solved and you made some uh, great uh, ways in your personal life, maybe you lost some weight, maybe you quit smoking, but hopefully 2022 uh, was a really great year for you and hopefully uh, 2023 uh, will be even uh, better in your personal development. Again, if you are new to the channel, welcome aboard. Uh, if you can be so kindly to give us a like, and if you haven't so uh, do so, uh, subscribe to the channel. Again, we are broadcasting Monday through Wednesday um, and also on the weekends to kind of give everybody an unbiased point of view of what the market is doing. So let's talk about the tape, right? So um, as we mentioned in the last couple of days, we had two major events or at least major events on the week to week uh, basis. We had uh, the CPI, they came in better than expected. Uh, and if you look at yesterday's action, we, you know, all you had to do is watch last night's video. We talked about it in kind of nausea. We had this really big move up only to kind of give it pretty much all of it back. And today was the Fed. Uh, we all knew, right, that there wasn't really a shock factor, okay? We all knew that Powell wasn't gonna say anything new, okay? We knew that there was a high probability of a 50 basis point hike, right? That there wasn't any surprises. The language continues to be exactly the same thing. We are moderating, and obviously I'm paraphrasing, but we are monitoring inflation. Inflation still is a concern, but we're on top of it. Don't you worry, we're on top of it. Uh, probably expect more uh, Fed hikes in the up and coming year. So basically blah, 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 as Charlie Brown's teacher once said, wah, wah, wah. Wah, 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 wah. We were new this, right? We actually knew this. But the most important part is kind of what we continue to talk about. Uh, every single, um, every single data point in the last couple of months, whether it's CPI, jobs number, uh, PAL testimony, whatever the case may be, until now ended exactly the same way. We actually even talked about it in last night's video, and I said, how many times can you say exactly the same thing without finally uh, the market kind of well saying, all right, we already heard this before. You know, it's over, right? We're not excited anymore. It's like it's like I gave an example today in the live webinar. You tell an eight-year-old kid, Santa Claus is coming tomorrow, Santa Claus is coming tomorrow. Yay, Santa Claus is coming tomorrow. The kid turns nine, Santa Claus is coming tomorrow. Yay, Santa Claus. By the time the kid's 11, he's like, okay, whatever, just give me my gift, right? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. They learn to live with it. And this is the most important part. The market has, I don't want to say spoken today. And I'll, I'll explain what I, what I mean in a second. But it really did conclude kind of the point and put a, ribbon on, on what we'll be talking about, that no matter what they say, no matter what the data comes out, it all ends up at the bottom of the range or the middle of the range. So I don't personally think this was uh, a day that both investors and traders wanted, right? The conclusion of the day, because if you look at how the day started, right? They ran up the market, the Dow was up about 300 points. Um, when, the, when the Fed came out with the news, 50 basis points, I personally thought the only way the bulls were really gonna rally um, if, if Powell started using the word tapered at maybe 25 for the next meeting, never used those words. And the Dow went, it was up, you know, the Dow was up about 500, uh, reverse course very, very quickly and, uh, closed down hundred. So you're talking about a 500 point, uh, reversal from top to bottom on the fed news. And you can see the, you know, the cues, right? They sold off yesterday and they sold off again today. Here's the problem, right? Here's our problem. When you're trading and you're formulating an opinion for the next day, and again, if you're joining us for the first time, again, I am, I am no genius, I'm not smart. Matter of fact, I am 
the king of the idiots, right? So when you're the king of the idiots, you can't go further than one or two days out, right? I like to go for the next day. I try to make my battle plan, my formulate my opinion for the next day. What I wanted to see on today's kind of conference, right? Or at least it's Q and A, whatever the case may be. I wanted to desperately see either us get closer to the top of the range where we had yesterday on the CPI number or really, really sell off to the bottom of the range, right? Here's our problem. We're right in the middle, right? We're right in the middle. So whether you think the market is going up or down, it's irrelevant. The, the market is telling you the price action is right in the middle. And this has been our problem. This whole con con whole congestion phase, this whole distribution phase ever since that, uh, ever since the, well, what, what month are we in? Uh, the November CPI has completely gone sideways for exception of blips on data and that came back. So we're kind of in no man's land. We're not in heaven, we're not in hell, we're in purgatory, right? I don't think anything great happens in purgatory. And when you look at a lot of charts, you'll see exactly the same thing, right? You'll see Amazon, right? Not here nor there in between. You see Apple, not here nor there in between, right? Just a chart after chart after chart. This is the only one that continues to go down, right? Netflix, uh, excuse me, Tesla continues to go down. Um, you know, again, no matter what it tries to look like and, you know, what it, what it says and this, that, the other thing, it just continues to go down. I still think the soft landing for this thing is, you know, roughly around the 150, 152 area. Uh, we have quad, uh, quad expiration um, on Friday. Uh, they're just betting, even at the strength today, uh, or at least attempted strength, the stock was never green. Um, they were coming for the 150 weeklies and they were coming for... Uh, leaps, right? They will come for the 140, 130 we leaps all the way out to 2024, 2025. But nothing, guys, I'm telling you right now, nothing uh, nothing got resolved today. And it's, it's a little bit frustrating uh, if you are going into tomorrow's session expecting one side or the other. You hear, you hear the arguments, right? You can hear the arguments in your head. Well, the market's going higher. Well, the market's going lower. Yes and yes, right? That's what's called being in the middle of the channel. And when you are in the middle of the channel, the last thing you want to do is try to figure it out, right? Um, so we have, what, two weeks left, right? We have two weeks left, uh, two weeks left in the year, two and change. We have 10 days to Christmas. You know, if you're like me, you're just basically pretty much scalping. You're not, you're not making an opinion of the market. You're not putting on positions going into next year. Most fund managers, most uh, most guys that I know are just closing down their books. They might day trade here, here and there. Maybe Tesla gets a little cheaper. Uh, maybe Tesla gets a little better, debt cap balance, maybe Netflix, Meta, so forth and so on. But I'm telling you, you're not going to see a lot of, you're not going to see a lot of heavy money coming into the end of the year. If anything, you'll see some tax law selling uh, on certain things. But again, to, to pick and try to, uh, try to will your, your opinion on somebody going to the end of the year, you can see for yourself, we're right in the middle. So everybody save their breath. Let's see which way do we break. Uh, you look at the spies, right? Look at the spies, the same thing, right? You know, they got to the top of the range yesterday on the CPI, came all the way back in. Again, so here's our dilemma going into tomorrow. Stocks are just not strong enough to push through to the upper ranges. But when they tried to sell them off today, guess what happened? They couldn't sell them off today either. So flip a coin. Here's a dime, right? Here's a dime. Flip a coin. Heads go higher. Tails lower. It doesn't matter. They'll, they'll both uh, fail and both work out. So uh, this is the time to kind of decompress a little bit, right? Um, I definitely like some names going into tomorrow. Um, there's some names that look pretty good, right? I don't think they're going to be manslaughtered or they're going to be, uh, as as the kids say, to the moon. But I think there's press possibilities, right? And I think, you know, if you're trading for tomorrow with the rest of the year, you kind of have to kind of make a battle plan into both sides of the market. So let me, let me give you guys some ideas, right? GameStop, I wouldn't look at usually, right? And I know this is a meme stock, and I know this is like, you know, the ultimate retail name, this and AMC. Here's kind of what I'm looking at, right? So if you saw yesterday, if you saw yesterday, the stock came out of a range, uh, one month range, right? Today's what, the 14th? The low of this channel was 2189. You guys see that? 2189. So broke it yesterday. Came, you know, put in a new low, had an inside day today on smaller volume. If GameStop starts, and again, if we're talking about GameStop going into tomorrow, again, if you, this is the first time you're, you're joining this channel, usually I would not start out with GameStop, right? I probably wouldn't even, even know GameStop existed because I trade beta, high, t uh, high tech technology. But this one looks pretty good, right? It couldn't rally today, uh, put in a, you know, kind of a dead cat bounce into the middle of the range, inside day. 
If, if GameStop starts building below yesterday's channel, I think the stock could flush, right? looks pretty good. Uh, at the same time, we rally tomorrow. Square doesn't look bad, right? Square doesn't look bad. Uh, it held on to some gains. It's closer to the top of the channel than most names to the bottom of the channel. Let's see Let's see if Square could finally get above uh, the highs for the last couple of days. Uh, that looks interesting. Uh, a name like NTES, right? China name. You know, usually I wouldn't mess around with China's, but again, you, you know, beggars can't be choosers in, you know, in, in this type of scenario when everything in the middle of their range. So uh, here's the top of the channel here. Let's keep an eye on it. If, if, if the China names start waking up, um, you know, maybe we can get something good. On the flip side, you got Roku, right? You got Roku trying to test the bottom of the channel here. So you, you, you kind of get my point. You have to uh, kind of be flexible on both sides of the market. And the one thing that I always say, look, just because the market's open doesn't mean something is happening. Yeah, something might be happening, something might be moving, but that something might not necessarily reflect your strategy. That something might not necessarily reflect your process. So if I see some $4 stock moving, I couldn't care less about it, right? So I don't trade these stocks for the most part. Well, once in a while I will. There's some massive option flow, but I don't care about these stocks. So the idea that something is happening somewhere, yeah, that's true, but it might not correlate into your sweet spot. So going into tomorrow, look, you don't have to trade every single day. Uh, you wait for value, wait for a clear sign. Uh, we got 10 days left, it'll be nine days after tomorrow. Uh, for Christmas, Santa Claus is coming, the kids are gonna be off from school, your family's gonna be around you. We got some football at the end of the year, right? We got some good food. Well, most of you guys get good food. I'm, I'm not there anymore. I'm gluten free and sugar free. Thank you very much for your four months uh, and going. Hence the 20 pound loss. Uh, but more important is this is a great time of year. And again, I, I, I very rarely see that you're trying to make your whole year in the last uh, 10 days uh, of the year, the last two days of the year. So we'll see what happens tomorrow, right? Uh, let's see. If we get some value, that's great. If we don't get any value, that's great as well. Again, we don't trade because the market, you know, the market is open. We trade because we have value. Guys, God bless. Stay blessed. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.